Hello, hello, hello. All right, this should work this time. Um, so I froze everything in this in the interest of a processor. I'm trying to tweak my setup, make sure that I can actually get good recordings of more complex Ableton projects without overloading my system while I'm trying to screen capture and record and all that stuff. So uh, this is a orchestral, like a hybrid orchestral trailer demo kind of thing that I put together the other night. So I'm going to take you through it, but first let's take a listen. It's a little over a minute long, so it's not too long. Cool. So you get the point. Um, I guess I'll just kind of take you through it uh, a little bit conceptually, and then I'll take you through the actual tracks. Um, but basically, it's it's in E minor, and it's basically a big long E minor drone, uh, more or less. And uh, it's actually not E minor. It, more specifically, it's E Phrygian, which is like minor, but it's got a flat two, right? And uh, the melody line actually starts on that flat two, which adds to that tension, right? So that's kind of going for this epic, you know, tense kind of, you know, like hybrid orchestral feel, right? You can like imagine it going to, I don't know, some creepy movie or some thriller or whatever, like pretty much anything, uh, as long as it has, has a lot of tension to it. Cool. So um, basically, you know, it starts off with this big giant impact right and then uh, at the same time as the impact happens you get these big mega horns down here right so these mega horns right they sound awesome they're from um, Albion 1 which is absolutely fantastic it's by Spitfire uh, and it basically is everything you need. I have quite a few things that came from Albion in this. Um, so this is from Albion. This is from Albion. Right. This is Albion. This is Albion. This is Albion. Because um, it's really good for this kind of thing. This is also Albion. Right. This is also Spitfire, but it's not Albion. Um, but it's a really nice piano uh, that they offer uh, in this Olafur um, Arnold's collection. Right, and then these, uh, some of these strings runs are from Albion, but this is actually from an ATO uh, thing. And then Gravity and Damage are both from Heaviosity, uh, who also makes really just excellent sounding stuff. Um, so yeah, I didn't do most of this sound design. Um, you know, I'm going to do other tutorials on how to design sounds like this, but they're really, really good, you know. Um, the people at Spitfire in particular, uh, you know, they're excellent, like really excellent sound designers, really excellent at recording sounds and making them sound fantastic. Um, you know, and at some point these people's skills are going to outstrip my own. And it's a lot of work to try and put all the samples together yourself. So if you can find really, really good stuff, right, and craft something with really, really good stuff, you can still, you know, output something of very, very high quality. And, um, you know, you can be of the mind that you're cheating when you do this, but 
on the flip side, you know, it's you're never gonna go and raise the goats to make the the drums that you're sampling. You know, there, there's somewhere where you have to draw the line, and ultimately, I think that composition is really where it's at, and um, you know, using the tools at your disposal to make as good of art as possible, right? Because what's really important is the quality of the output and not your own sense of legitimacy about how you went about creating it, right? Because ultimately, if you don't have any skills, you're not going to be able to produce something. If you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to be able to put something together like this, even if you have gravity and Albion and damage, right? It's not, it's not going to make a difference if you don't understand rhythm, if you don't understand how to create harmonic tension and um, create themes and a story, right? Uh, so that's really where I feel like the, the crux of the art is. Um, that said, always improve at sound design. You know, always uh, increase your skills on those levels too, because there's there's a lot that you can do to tweak the sounds and make the sounds more your own or more fitting for what you're at or what you're after, like for this particular song. Um, and if you don't know anything about sound design, you're not going to be able to do that. Okay, so gravity. Um, I'm going to unfreeze one of these so that you can see what's going on. But basically. Um, you know, these first two tracks are some libraries from Gravity here. I'm just hitting this note down here. And bam. Right? There's a couple other knobs where I can, like, drag this up and make it more intense if I wanted. Right? Gravity is awesome. I encourage you to check it out. It's very expensive. Um, don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, they do have half off sales, but it's still expensive at half off. Um, but it's excellent. You know, it's a very big library. Uh, so these first two, um, you know, you can hear these tails. Oops. All right, this is just sort of to add some extra tension. It's on the outro. Right, that mixed with this. We're still overdriving it with that punish knob here. Um, oops. No, what am I doing? Um, main. Right. I'm not trying to be that intense right now. Maybe. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, so you basically get the gist there. So we've got these opportune moments where we're striking in really, really hard, setting the scene immediately, just being like, hey, this is what we're about, right? Um, damage, so this is all now the drums, basically. I'm actually going to take you to these Easter Island ones. This is from, again, uh, Albion 1, right? And just listen to that. It's so big, right? And you can see the velocity work there. Right, and then we can see over here that they build and they sort of uh, get a little bit denser. And these are all big hits right here. Um, I'll, I guess I'll unfreeze that really quick so you can look at it. Um, yeah, this is it. I mean, absolutely gorgeous, right? Cool. So that's what's going on there. Um, damage is again by Heaviosity. Um, I'm probably not going to unfreeze this one. It's a bunch of orchestral kits and other things. It's kind of like Heaviosity's Albion one, but less so. It doesn't really have like strings and things like that. Um, but it's nice. You know, it sounds good. Um, right. It's so it's sort of like presenting stuff.
All right, and then this doesn't actually have very much for the build. That um, main intensity comes from these hypertoms, which are um, also from Albion. So you'll notice that I stopped the density towards the end. And that's because I wanted more room for other things, um, like these big hits and stuff like that. But also, um, if you listen to that pulse, it's like da 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 It actually kind of feels faster because it's so even that it's not like these strong hits and weak hits, and those are just like quick notes in between the main pulse. It's like it becomes the main pulse, right? So it's like all of a sudden it goes into double time, right? So you can actually use fewer notes and give a sense of being faster, right? You know, depending on how it's accented. So it's just like, da, 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 you know, so it's not like, hopefully that makes sense, right? You can see down here, these notes like kind of help with the main pulse, right? Well, this is twice as fast as that, right? And that also makes space for more things right to come through which is this is the busiest section and you know at some point you don't need to worry too much about a perfectly clear mix because it's like supposed to be overwhelming like there's too many things to figure out what's going on just for a moment you know cool So we've gotten through all these drums, right? Um, we've got this mega brass. So the important thing to look at is these expression pedal curves, right? So that's going to help with these swells, right? And kind of the most interesting part is here. Now I've got a little bit to do to actually fix this at the end. It sounds pretty good. Um, I might like make it just last just a little bit longer, I think. Not that long. That's like, yeah, I mean just like right into the, the very beginning of the next phrase. And this is on loop, so it's actually looping. I don't want that. So I want to make this a little bit longer. Nice, right? So there we go. Um, cool. Yeah, that's pretty good. I might even make it just a little bit shorter. But you get the gist, right? Um, so nice, like, wow, wow, kind of like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like it's like, a, I don't know, it's like it's like rising up. Um, this is just, you know, it didn't feel complete when I had everything else. This is the last thing I added. It's just this little, like, kind of tension-y loop kind of thing. I mixed it way down there so it sort of draws your ear in. Right? Right, and we've gotten so fast and this this you'll notice it's speeding up the whole time, right? Um, and it even speeds up faster at the end because of the curvature. Right? So um, you know, this, by the time you hear it from the first time to the last time, it's probably going twice as fast, right? We go from 60 to 180. So we're going three times as fast at the end as we are at the beginning. Um, these steam drones are kind of interesting. These are mostly going up in a diminished chord. If like, you know what that is, like fully diminished chord. Um, it's a lot of tritones and stuff, right? So it's like kind of like the most dissonant notes. You don't really need to know too much but if you just think about playing notes that sound bad together and going up uh, these would probably be some of the ones that you end up finding right but um, 
Yeah, or go up three semitones, three semitones, three semitones, three semitones forever. That that's a diminished chord. All right. So we're in E. There's no A sharp in the key I'm using. There's no C sharp. Right. Really, I'm using all white keys. Right. All right. So this big body of tension gets generated. Now these strings, they match this piano, right? I mean, you can see this is all quantized. I played this in and I quantized it. Um, there's a few reasons to do that. I didn't want it to be, you know, if, if things are a little bit like off, it drags attention, right? I really wanted this to like blend in um, as much as I could into the background so people could like pay attention to whatever film it's set to as opposed to being too taken away by like the melody line or anything like that so it's um, you know it's compelling I, I mentioned this but it starts on this F this flat 2 right and it's basically this E minor drone so that half step is going to give a lot of tension right from the get go It's kind of like rising, 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 rising. And then here it's, um, you know, more half steps, half step, half step. Half steps help make things sound creepy, right? Or like tense. Um, so I bring in these woods and these strings, right? And they crescendo in, right? To like sort of keep building tension and like evolving the color of that line. So it's not just that piano. The other thing I do is even here, it, um, you can't see it so much, um, but here the automation is changing for one of these level or these layers. I actually made this out of several layers um, of the same patch. Well, not the same patch, but like different variations of this piano that they'd put together in this um, Olafur Arnold's uh, composer toolkit. Right, so I'm sort of, um, one's like really big and spacey and dreamy, and so I'm sort of cutting away at that to get it to be like a little bit more um, articulated, right, and not just this big, this big wash. Okay, uh, then I do these string runs. Uh, you'll notice also right here, I kind of cut to like nothing, except for just reverb tails, right? Then I have that sort of introducing the beat kind of thing going like, you know, one, two, three, four, and like, you know, hit it, all right? One, two, three, four. All right, so check out these strings. Um, these first couple are also from Albion, I believe, uh, and then these cage effects, too. Cool. So this is a little bit granular. You can see this automation curve. This is the grain size that's being automated, right? And it's causing, um, basically, I stretched out this sound in order to make it turn into more grains. And then I'd start having big grains and then they get smaller and smaller, right? So uh, hopefully you can hear that. Right, so it's these big grains and then they're sort of coming together faster and faster at you. You know, it's subtle, but it does make a difference. Um, this this is by 8DO. It's free. Um, they have this free tri-pack is what they call it, a tri-pack for their cage series. Uh, it's awesome. You know, just the tri-pack is enough to do, like, really good stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's basically everything. Um, you know, there's this refrain at the end. That's, like, a nice touch. All right, sort of bring people back to like this main theme of creepiness, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I'll play it for you guys one more time, um, but that's that's the gist of it. Um, you know, really think about imagery and like where you want to go with your music. You know, I produce a lot of electronic music too, and um, 
it's frustrating that a lot of people aren't really thinking about the directionality of their music and where they're trying to go with it and where they're trying to come from. Um, and you know, all all the great artists are, I think, and I think that really makes a big difference. So if you're sort of here because you're more in like the electronic music world, um, try bringing some of these kinds of things into that. You know, if you made it to the end of this video, hopefully you, you are, but really try and bring some of the storytelling and the narrative, you know, that's what makes music powerful and impactful. And without that, um, you know, it, it's going to come off as really dry and it might sound good, right? It might sound cool, but you don't need to sacrifice the expressive part of your art just because, or, you know, you know, and be satisfied that, you know, you made something that sounds good and cool, right? You know, there's, there's more to it than that. And you don't, shouldn't really sacrifice any, aspect of your music if you can make it more powerful and better right you should really be a full spectrum piece of art um at least in my opinion so uh thanks so much i'm going to play this one more time for you guys uh, you can also find it on my soundcloud and i'm I, I have a trap remix i'm making of it right now um it's super awesome you're know, like in this big room it's just like crushy drums and stuff it's cool all right take care